Welcome to Crosspoint. 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 An interactive program featuring ministers and leaders of the Christian community addressing the issues that are challenging the church today. Here's your host, Mark Taylor. The tribulation is near. How much more near is the rapture of the church? This is Mark Taylor, and welcome to today's edition of Crosspoint. With me is my guest, Terry James, who's the general editor, along with many other contributors, of a new book called Trajectory, Tracking the Approaching Tribulation Storm. Here with me now on Crosspoint is Terry James. Now, Terry's been with us before as uh, he's put uh, different books together um, throughout the years, talking about areas of prophecy in the Bible. And uh, this latest one he's got here, Trajectory, is uh, tracking the approaching tribulation storm. Uh, There's at least, Terry, 20 contributors you've got in this book. Uh, So you become like the general editor, and we get to hear from a lot of different people about this area. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct, Mark. Uh, We uh, have several authors that uh, they're all very... uh very good observers of the times and, of course, of steeped in Bible prophecy. In the section one of the book, it starts off and it's called Prophecy's Greatest Forecaster. So, you know, for us knowing what a forecast is, what would you consider that to be, Prophecy's Greatest Forecaster? Uh, well, of course, the Prophecy's Greatest Forecaster would be uh, Jesus, who gave us uh, all the prophetic scriptures and so forth to look at and the signals to look for as we approach the end times. So I would say the Bible. The Bible. Well, that's the place to go. Now, Terry, if you could kind of help the folks here a little bit. Uh, you know, we talk about the, you know, tracking the approaching tribulation storm. We talk about the rapture of the church. Then you hear about the second coming. Is there a difference between, uh, you know, the Christians vanishing and then the actual uh, second appearing of Christ and all that? Some people kind of tie all this together, but this is a sep- these are separate events. Is that correct? That's correct. Jesus said, you know, as was recorded in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3, he said, uh, let not your heart be troubled, he told his disciples, and uh, talking to us also down through the years, uh, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And if I go away, well, I will go and prepare a place for you and come again and receive you unto myself. That's where I am. There you be also. Well, Jesus is saying here he's coming to the rapture. Now, this is something that, you know, until recently seminarians have been saying that this couldn't have been the uh, rapture, but uh, but talking about the second coming. But now they're all agreeing that, yeah, Jesus said he's coming for us and taking us to him, which is uh, the Greek word paralambano. It's a different word than uh, and if he was coming all the way to earth. He's coming to receive us to himself. And that's the rapture. And he, then we go where he receives us to himself and takes us back to heaven. But in the second coming, he's coming all the way to earth. You know, in chapter 19, verse 11 of Revelation, it says that uh, there's clouds open and we and the whole world will see him descending and coming back to earth to put it into Armageddon. So it's two different, two different, uh, two different events all together. But but all part of the second coming, you know, there is two phases. Now, chapter two is uh, one of the chapters you wrote here in the book. Uh, it's called the deluge of deception. Boy, do we live in a time of great deception. And you say the deluge of evil cannot be missed by the Christian who is spiritually attuned to the things transpiring minute by minute in our world today. So you're, you're, I guess you're saying there that, you know, a lot of people might be deceived and being deceived, but the Christian that's truly following Christ is not being deceived, but is really actually catching on to what's happening. Well, I think so. I mean, anybody who looks around, I've ever, ever seen such madness uh, going on. It's uh, it's Romans chapter 1, verse 28, you know, about the, because they've turned it back on God, you have to give them, turn them over to uh, a reprobate mind. Well, my goodness, look around now, and they're saying that men can be pregnant, They, you know, men can be women if they want to, uh, and uh, the things that they're recommending over children are having transvestites do all their activities before little kindergartners, and, they, and even the parents seem to think this is okay. Uh, all the lewd activity going on—that's that's delusion of the whole world. I mean, 
before, you know, those people, those transvestites, for example, who've been put in jail. Uh, and now they're accepted and lauded, and now uh, we who protest such things are are uh, criticized as being somehow uh, bigoted, narrow-minded, wanna, we, we want to burn books and all this other nonsense. So, uh, yeah, the madness we see going on, and uh, just, just within the, the area of biology, when you say a man can be a woman, a woman can be a man, it, they don't have to be what they were born as, they can be, they can choose their own gender. Uh, this is madness, and it's delusion, and uh, it's not the great delusion yet, but it's headed that direction that uh, it's talked about, and Paul talked about in Second Thessalonians chapter uh, 3. You also referred to Genesis chapter 6. You talk about, you know, you say that today's society and culture is increasingly being slanted with evil, and you, and you refer to Genesis chapter 6 as a level of activity. What happened in Genesis chapter 6 that kind of makes it parallel a little bit with what's going on today? So their minds were on, minds were on evil almost can, only continually. Well, that seems like before we are right now, and violence filled the whole earth. Well, you know, we've got that going on, too, everywhere we look. If you look in this country, even, uh, we see uh, the Black Lives Matter and all these other things, Antifa, uh, all these things, they burn cities down. That's another sign of the delusion and madness. Uh, they will per- they will arrest, the FBI will arrest, for example, a parent who goes to a school board and protests uh, that his child has been raped uh, by a so-called trans uh, trans person, a boy that said he's trying to become a girl, and um, in the same locker room with the girl, and he's raped. He rapes the girl, and they transfer him to another another school, even. So there's madness. Uh, violence fills the whole earth, and they'll arrest those people, but they won't. They won't touch the people who burn down cities, and uh, and so. Uh, See this violence not only in the United States but across the whole world right now, and then uh, you know their minds were on evil continually. It's uh, it's obviously happening now, and it's become like Genesis chapter six. And Jesus said it'll be like it was in the days of Noah uh, when he returns. So we that's why we know we're getting very close to the at least the rapture of the church, which will happen at least seven years before the uh, second advent. At the end of chapter 2 there, uh, before you go into chapter 3, uh, you say, despite the most uh, vicious attempts imaginable by globalists, debacleists in D.C. DC and other capitals of the world to rip American sovereignty and autonomy to shreds, God continues to restrain the raging efforts to bring down their supernaturally inspired experiment in liberty. America will be here, I'm believing, until that restraint is withdrawn when Christ calls the born-again believers uh, to himself. So are you saying there that you believe that basically the Christians being here is the restraint that's holding back what's really getting ready to happen? And once the Christians are removed, uh, those restraints will be removed, and then we're going to have yeah. a lot of problems. Is that yes. what you're saying? Yes, oh. that's exactly what Second uh, Thessalonians chapter 2 says. <clears throat> he will continue. God will continue to restrain until he, be, he being the Holy Spirit, who is it then dwells the Christian, be taken out of the way, and then will that man of sin be revealed, son of perdition, uh, the Antichrist, and we see the preparation for the Antichrist uh, regime taking place right now with places like the in places like Davos, uh, Switzerland, with uh, with the uh, World Economic Forum and Klaus Schwab. Yeah. And all of these people who are determined to tear down American sovereignty, uh, because America stands in the way, and that's because uh, I believe uh, God has chosen this nation to be uh, the very last bastion of of liberty and freedom. Now, I, I believe that not because America deserves anything, because we deserve judgment more than the other nation because of the wickedness here, turning our backs on God as a nation. But uh, God has chosen America. He chose America to kind of uh, be the uh, the nation that uh, that helped uh, Israel in becoming a nation again in 1948. And uh, so God chose America for a special reason. I believe personally <clears throat> that uh, that America it may have been on Jesus' the very mind.
mind of our Lord when he made the prophecy that I believe is the most effective prophecy, the most pertinent prophecy for our time, and that is uh, found in Luke 17, verses 28 through 30, when he said, Like as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. And then he goes on to say they're buying, selling, they're marrying, giving in marriage, they're planting, they're building. But the very day that that uh, Lot went out of Sodom, judge, uh, the Son of Man was revealed, or judgment fell, he said that very day. I believe he may have had America in mind, because America is is still buying and selling, doing everything pretty much as normal. We're the only nation in the world right now that is like that. If, if people were truly looking to see what's going on, America is still the only nation in the world that is buying and selling and doing everything pretty much as normal with regard to the economy and so forth. All the other nations of the world are in, in meltdown, and it's even causing wars and rumors of wars like in Ukraine and other places. But America still, despite having, I think, the most reprobate minds ever in our government, the upside-down thinking minds ever in government, we're still, for some reason, holding up things now that the economic experts, a lot of them say that you, this can't go on. We can't go on with these trillions and trillions of dollars of so deficits. We can't go on, but yet they've been saying that for 10, 15 years. And still, like, the debts keep building, and it's never happened before in history that this kind of debt has been built and so forth, and uh, and uh, and that nothing has happened. It had a major uh, depression and a complete collapse. Well, God himself is keeping that collapse from happening. Jesus talked about it in that very scripture. And uh, and America is the apex nation of the world, not because we deserve to be, but God, with the most blessed materially ever to exist, and one of the most spiritually uh, ever to exist. But now, of course, we're in total uh, deserving of judgment. And the very moment, I believe, that, that, that the rapture occurs, well, I believe, I believe, like Jesus said, uh, they're buying, selling, doing all the normal things, that America is still doing. We're the nation, that only nation that is. But the very moment that the, ra- that the rapture occurs, this big collapse that everybody has been fearing is going to happen. Carl Schwab and his uh, Claude Schwab, uh, Klaus Schwab and his his uh, World Economic Forum people and all these new one- world order people are going to get their fondest wish because uh, America will then be taken out of the way, and that's the biggest holdup. Uh, it's American sovereignty. They want they want to destroy American sovereignty. That's what they're trying to do. But the moment the rapture occurs, that will all come crashing down, and they will have their world order, new world order. People will be clamoring for answers, and, uh, of course, that's such a stage for the man of sin, son of perdition, the Antichrist. Yeah. Now, you're talking about, you know, the, the Great Reset, as they call it, the Global Reset. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what you're saying basically is God <laughs> is getting ready to do the Great Reset before they do, and God by His gonna, great, great Reset is going to trigger <laughs> this Great Reset that they're talking the about. Reset. Yeah, uh, he, they're going to show. He's going to show them a reset. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> and they yeah, and then they'll have their choice. Yeah, I can see that now. Uh, Tim Moore is uh, one of the contributors there, and in, in Chapter Three there, he talks about the modern day. Modern day Antichrist seek to tear down and obliterate the uh, simply the manner of course that they are <clears throat> multiplying in the midst the riots that spring up in 220 uh, Rachel's dissensions uh, were framed into flames by or fanned into flames by self-serving race baiters and, uh, not to even gave way to the waves of lawlessness and destruction and in many instances the advocates of the anarchy were flew in for the occasion so <clears throat> these modern day anarchists that he's talking about what, what I mean they're not the antichrist maybe but but what are a, a modern day anarchists what kind of people are we talking about here well Antifa, for example, you know they want to. Uh, they say that they're in against. Uh, they're against what is Antifa against the fascists? But they are the fascists. They're, they're Benito Mussolini on steroids here in this country and and other places. They and just everybody basically wants to tear down uh, tear down civil liberty. Uh, uh, to change things, they want everything to change. They want to uh, bring in uh, Karl Marx's uh, view of uh, communism. They, they're looking for revolution. Uh, they don't. Most of them don't know why, but the very heads of these things know why. But yet they don't have the true picture either. Satan knows why. He's the one that's orchestrating all this. And certainly, you know, he is. He knows he, his time is short. There's no question about it. 
and he is really rationing things up. And I don't think we've seen anything yet as to what is about to happen in this world. I would agree with that. Well, folks, stay with us. We're going to be back with more right after this. This is Mark Taylor. If you miss a broadcast of Crosspoint, you can always go to our website at www.kneo.org and click on the programs page. There you can access the current Crosspoint program as well as the last four programs that have been aired. Never miss another Crosspoint program again. Go to www.kneo.org today. Welcome back to Crosspoint. I'm Mark Taylor. My guest today is Terry James. He's a general editor with many contributors on the book Trajectory. Now, Terry, if people would want to know more about this book, and I think you've probably been involved in 30-some books uh, being written one way or another, uh, you know, in your ministry, how would people find out about this book, others, and what you do? Well, I would correct you on that now. It's, I'm, I'm 80 years old now, so <laughs> it's up to 43. It's up to 43. Yeah. My goodness. Wow. Yeah. The best way to do it, you can go to Amazon and get it, of course. Just look, Terry James, look up uh, Trajectory. and um, Or you can go to um, your favorite ministries, really. You can go to Christ in Prophecy, um, you know, Lamb and Lion Ministry, it is. You can go to... Um, Olive Tree the, Ministries, the, I guess, too. No? Olive Tree, yeah, Jan, Jan Markell, my dear friend. So Jan would be a good one. There's just a number of places you can go. I think you can go to probably Southwest Radio Church. You can go to... Go to Defender Publishing House and get it too, uh, p- the publisher. But I would recommend I would recommend one of your favorite ministries so that uh, support them as well as uh, as get, a, get. I think it's it's probably the best book of compilation we've done so far. There's about twenty different contributors. How did you go about organizing them to talk about these different subjects in the book? Well, I always, uh, Mark, I always start by praying about a book before I begin it. What, what, and, and the thought just comes to me. God just sends me the, the thought. Uh, the Holy Spirit, I think, just tells me, you know what? I sit around talking with my son. My son and I sit around and have conversations. He's he's 52 now, and he's, he's one of the brightest people. He's a pharmacist. He's one of the brightest people I know, and we have great conversations. And we were just talking about things, and it struck me as we were talking. I said, you know, I think a book trajectory, call it trajectory, because of the, of the direction we're going, uh, the direction this world is on toward uh, the tribulation era. It's like a storm, and we can track it. And we talked about that for a while, so that's where that thought came from. And then I prayed, you know, about well, what what authors would be good for this, and and uh, of course I just started looking at lists I have of all my friends in the ministry and. Started looking at those, and, and then pretty soon, well, you know, the list came together, and uh, everybody agreed. I think uh, maybe there's only one or two who were so engaged in some other things they couldn't, but uh, most every one of them agreed to to write, and I was really happy with that. We got some great ones like uh, like Dave Reagan, of course, and Nathan Jones, Tim Moore, and uh, Jeff uh, Kenley. Uh, there's just a lot of them. You had mentioned earlier, uh, you know, it's talking about you know how things kind of work together chapter five i believe this is a book uh, you're talking about this group here you and here again you say the pandemic represents a rare but narrow window of opportunity to reflect reimagine uh, reset our world um, here uh, <clears throat> reimagined equals the adding of superpowers to humans via injections of eye injections and uh refers to the Marxist regime of the WEF, which is a world uh, economic forum that promotes by the Great Reset. So do you believe, uh, Terry, that the COVID-19 pandemic really gave acceleration to this uh, new world order? Um, This has kind of been a big, like, winning goal that they've been able to use. And, you know, it's one of the signals Jesus gave in his prophecy in the the last days leading up to the tribulation there would be pestilence and of course uh, he, by by those those signals he gave he didn't he meant that would be they would really be more more prolific it would be more a lot more of these things and one of the signals was was that there will be pestilence and of course that's what covid is now i don't believe a lot of people believe that this is was right from the beginning it was created in order to inject the world with with this uh, pandemic, uh, and that uh, from that, uh, the New World Order builders would be able to build a new world order, and that they planned it. Now, I don't 
think they planned it uh, necessarily. I think that it did. It was maybe in China may have let it get loose on purpose. I don't know. But uh, it certainly didn't have this grandiose scheme of bringing in the Antichrist regime. However, Satan, who orchestrates this whole thing, knows and knew. He knew the shortness of time. And I do believe that the uh, this COVID-19 uh, thing was was released and, and according to his plans. But then the beauty of that is God is in full control at all times. He knows the end from the beginning. He is restraining, as we said. He has them in derision, as it says in chapter Psalms chapter 2. If you want to see that, just look at our present uh, presidential administration and uh, and how... Uh, they've tried to do so many things, and at every every level, they've been they've been constrained and restrained to some extent. So this whole COVID thing, I think, it it is loose in the world, and there will be more too. And, and but now they see why, how people have reacted that they can actually do lockdowns and things. So they think they can do that again, and so so these now the new world order builders are starting to get on, you know, get into it. Well, yeah, we can use this to. We can use this to bring American sovereignty down and all these things. I think it's still going to be a terrible thing to do because this country is not going to fall until Jesus says so. It's going to fall. <laughs> no question about that. It's going to come under severe, probably the most severe judgment of all, but it's not going to do so until he says so. And uh, and so, uh, But that's what they want. They want to destroy American sovereignty primarily. And, uh, and so they've used it to try to do that with all the lockdowns, and all these things, they've tried to destroy businesses, and they have. They've destroyed businesses. They've tried to disrupt the educational system. They have. They've done that. They've masked everybody. They've separated everybody. And so uh, they, they've caught on to this. Uh, I'm talking about the New World Order Builders. Satan knows it all, had known it all along, uh, I believe. But uh, but again, God God says this far and no further. And, uh, and he'll, go, he'll let them go to a certain point. And you'll notice... That he'll throw derision into it. He'll throw. Uh, he said, "I will laugh at the, laugh at them, and I will have them in derision." Uh, he won't let them have their way. It's going to be his way uh, ultimately. Yeah, yeah. So when we think that mankind is doing exactly what mankind wants to do, uh, that's really not so. Mankind's only getting away as far as God will let him do what He wants him to exactly. do at this point. Correct? Exactly. That is exactly right. Yeah. And uh, as I said, like the old Irish guy said with his whiskey bottle, uh, you know, when he's trying to control his drinking, make a mark on the bottle, say this this far, no further. <laughs> yeah. Chapter uh, 9 of the books, Pete Garcia, and in that chapter there on page uh, 135, he says, uh, why would the people in power try to destroy the very system that put them in power because the powers that B picked up picked up on administration seemed to know something to rest to the rest of us uh, don't namely that if they don't act quickly they may not get a seat at the global table and granted right. these globalists will point to revelation 13 they point to here and also ephesians 6 12 is what they talk about here talk about mm-hmm. that a little bit well pete and i have another great book coming out pete and i wrote a book um coming out here this spring, for just in a month or two, uh, called The New World Order. And uh, it's a great, Pete, Pete is such a great thinker and writer. And, uh, of course, uh, it is all part of the, of the global reset that he talks about. And they do feel like they have to take advantage of everything uh, they can while they can. They like to get it going, and they like to make things heat, heat up. Right now, the, the COVID, for example, has been held back. Uh, some because there's been some things made, uh, some progress made in in uh, fighting it, but still they insist on these. What I, I believe are are evil, phony injections, and I do believe they have in mind to bring down the population of the world to 500 million or less. That's part of the Klaus Schwab and even George Soros, all these others, New Worlders. Uh, uh, that bad part of the uh, what was it the, uh, what was the stones called in uh, over there in Georgia the Georgia uh, yeah. Georgia stones yeah. uh, that was on there the stones and that was mysteriously removed for some reason and that had to be I don't know what part that played in their overall plans but it was and so Pete talks about these things and how these people want to see that the global 
uh, at the at the seat of global powers. And that is the Ephesians chapter six verse twelve. We struggle not against flesh and blood, but against the powers and principalities, against dark forces in high places. And that's exactly what it is. But those Ephesians chapter chapter six verse twelve and so forth up there about struggling against powers and principalities. For a long time, those of us who observed prophecy, well, that was talking strictly about demonic minions, uh, you know, Satan's uh, and his fallen forces causing all the problems. And they are. They're at the helm of it. But I think it, it also is meant to include human minions, too. And uh, these people are, are totally uh, under the uh, influence of, I'm talking about the New World Order builders and so forth. Even our gov- American government, particularly this American presidential administration right now, they're under uh, under this uh, Ephesians six twelve uh, demonic influence. Terry, you know about this woke insanity that's going on all over levels, and you're talking about it in the government, education, military, marketplace, mainstream media. It's pretty evident. But Terry, this is also bled into our some of our churches, our Bible colleges, and Christian institutions. Uh, you kind of reveal that a little bit there as well, or some of the contributors do. They they don't longer want to preach against homosexuality, for example, because uh, that that brings down the great ire. And there's so many among them in their pews now that that would be turned off by that, that, that cut down on a contribution and so forth. They stay away from the issues, uh, homosexuality. Abortion, abortion. Now that that was what Paul, one of the greatest uh, perils that Paul talked about in Second Timothy chapter three. He said that there will be, um, you know, there will be without natural affection. Well, those two, there's two areas right there that that we are looking at directly in our face, and that is homosexuality. Uh, you know, that's not a natural affection. That's an unnatural affection as you can get. Just read Romans chapter one, and uh, then then of course abortion, uh, the taking of little innocent babies' lives. Every mother who would turn their children over to be murdered in the womb. And, you know, I feel sorry for these mothers. They've been deluded, a lot of them. And that there's a way of redemption. And, and all you have to do is repent and uh, then turn from the, from this evil, and God will forgive. But, uh, but again, uh, that's an unnatural affection. Yeah. And uh, so that's, that's, uh, that's what we look at today. Now, I notice you also talk about the Christian today. You know, the the straight and narrow road we walk on, uh, you believe is being met more and more with the satanic headwinds now than we've ever had to face before? Well, yeah, I mean, there's no question about it. We're swimming upstream, definitely, but that's what we're supposed to be doing. That's why we're here. We're here to uh, to resist, resist the devil, and he will flee from us, it says. And just like he tempted Jesus in the wilderness, and Jesus used Scripture that's what we're to do. We're to use Scripture, we're to use prayer, and just depend on the Holy Spirit to guide us as we fight this evil. But that's, again, that's what the pulpits are not doing today. They're they're part of this woke culture we were talking about. They they uh, and, it's, and again, the apex of this upside down, this reprobate mind thinking that's in the churches, I'm talking about major denominations, uh, I got a few, and that is uh, that... It's become so bad they are actually having uh, transvestites uh, in the churches yeah, coming, you know, in special occasions, uh, parading up and down the aisles, and in, in children's uh, Sunday schools, children's classes, they're having they're having little five year olds, uh, you know, watch all this uh, lewd behavior, and then somehow I don't, I don't understand it. But somehow they they consider it, uh, you know. It's just being part of the, uh, the culture and learning, and uh, it be, it's, it's, it, it, somehow they see this as a godly activity. <laughs> and uh, so, so Satan has managed to to bring about the Laodicean church, <clears throat> and I think in the most egregious uh, form. Yeah, I I agree with that as well. Now, again, uh, I guess you like you said forty three books, and now you're working on a new one. Uh, uh-huh. That you're going to be having out. Tell people again now how if they want to pick up the book trajectory or one of the other books. Uh, what would you recommend they do? How would you go about doing that? Well, you can go to Amazon, put in my name, and, and it has all my list of all my books. But look and put in trajectory. Uh, New World Order is not out yet, but Pete and I did another one a little bit earlier. It's called The Disappearing, which was about the Rapture. 
Yeah. It's called the disappearing. That's when you can look at up. Uh, and, and all my books are there. I have I have I've written seven seven or eight novels. Yeah. Also, so they're there. My latest one was Messiah. And uh, so you can look any of these books up on just my name and put those words in. Now, Terry, do you have a website as well? Oh, yeah. We have the largest uh, prophecy website uh, on the Internet, and that is raptureready.com. Yeah, that's the largest. And uh, raptureready.com, all one word. And then my own personal blog, Terry James Prophecy Line, all one word, terryjamesprophecyline.com. So raptureready.com and terryjamesprophecyline.com. All right. All right, folks, stay with us. We're going to have more in a moment. When your life seems out of focus, spend some time with us. We'll help sharpen your focus and point you in the right direction to the one who's got it all figured out. 91.7 The Word, radio that impacts your future. You're listening to Crosspoint. I'm your host, Mark Taylor, and my guest today is Terry James, general editor of the book we're talking about today, Trajectory, Tracking the Approaching Tribulation Storm. And... uh, Terry, um, in the back of the book, uh, you do the conclusion, of course, to the book. You, you talk about uh, the signals of the approaching tribulation storm couldn't be uh, clearer. The choppy waters are becoming billowing waves, and the uh, Morton Autumnus uh, things to come. To these believers, Jesus said, and what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. So these things are going to grow with intensity of what we're seeing now that maybe we don't like, but they're going to grow with intensity is what you're saying. Well, absolutely. Jesus talked and gave those signals, you know, in, in all of that discourse. He gave uh, the signals to look for in Luke, ch- Luke chapter 21. He gave signals to look for. And then he tells all Christians, Mark, in Mark, uh, we're told in Mark thirteen thirty seven, what I say to one, I say to all, watch. You know, Jesus got on to the Judaizers and... Uh, for not seeing, not recognizing, and telling the people about his first coming, uh, he he said, "You know, you're hypocrites," and he he really got on to them, uh, the, the priestly crowd class of the Jews who did not tell one of the people. The Bible had laid out plainly the scriptures, the scrolls had laid out plainly about the time of his coming, and there he was right there among them, and working miracles and all the other things, and they would not. They did not tell the people. They would not tell the people. Well, that's our job as Christians, so not not just as prophecy watchers, which you know I think God has has appointed some of us as as you know people who write the books and, and do and dwell in Bible prophecy. We're supposed to we're supposed to do that. And you know, it says in Ezekiel chapter thirty six, I think if you don't do that, if you, if, you, if you don't tell the people and and the people perish uh, because you don't warn them of what's coming. Then the, their blood will be on your hands. But if you if you do warn them, then the blood will be on the blood will be on their hands. And I think that's right where we are. And uh, that's it. But it's every every Christian's job to understand the scriptures, particularly in these times. You need to understand the prophetic scriptures and what they say. And I were to watch. Jesus said to watch. He wants us to watch. And he says to look up when you see these all these things beginning to come to pass. Luke twenty one twenty eight. When you see all of these things begin to come to pass, well, we've been watching them begin to come to pass for quite a long time. Then look up and lift up your head for your redemption. That's him. He's drawing near. We're told in Titus 2.13, we're looking for a blessed hope, Jesus Christ, and, uh, and for his coming. And his coming is, is clearer every day, his, uh, these signals he's telling us about where to watch. Yeah. Now, speaking of where to watch, page 314 of the book talks about indicator number one, Israel. Why? Why is indicator number one Israel? Well, it just it is because uh, it, all these prophecies couldn't have unfolded until uh, tribulation couldn't come about if it wasn't in Israel. Because this whole book of uh, the tribu- uh, Revelation and everything about the tribulation is, is about Israel. The church is no longer in view. You can see you see the church in chapters of Revelation chapters 1 through 3. And after the third chapter, the church is mentioned no more until uh, the believers come back with Christ in Revelation chapter 19, verse 11, when uh, the clouds break open and he descends with all of the saints following. Um, so uh, it's about Israel. Um, the tribulation is to bring a remnant of Israel to belief. And uh, then uh, Israel, that, that re- re- believing remnant at the end of uh 
the end of the tribulation, the end of Armageddon, when Jesus returns, they will be the cheap goats judgment in Revelation chapter 25. And then all those nations will uh, who have, have treated Israel well will be in the millennium as nations. And all the believers, uh, all the believers uh, will inhabit those, and all those unbelievers will be cast into outer darkness and into Hades. But um, so the Israel will, uh, Israel will be the apex nation of the world at that point. So that's why Israel has to be back in the land. Of course, it was reborn as a nation with its own language. Something never happened uh, in, in on May fourteenth, nineteen forty-eight. And again, America was kind of a um, part of the birthing of that rebirthing of that nation. Yeah. Now, you point out something here uh, in the book as well. You say the U.S. Patriot Act, Patriot Act prepared the way before 9-11. Once 9-11 happened, the Patriot legislation was whizzed through Congress in no time for the people's future protection. People called for it. Uh, fear and bingo, the Patriot Act took about 90 percent of America's population's freedom and civil rights away uh-huh. for good. We have become enslaved to the beast. Tell me about that a little bit. Because well, everybody yeah, thinks it's know, a great deal. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know that's what happens when there's great fear, and that's what Satan wants to use with this COVID thing. Great fear. You know, they, so many people took that injection, which wasn't even wasn't even thoroughly tested, and, and many believe that there are people dying all over the place because of it. I'm one of those who believe that. I never took it, and I won't take it. This COVID, the COVID shots, and so forth. And you see people, even young people, young athletes dying. So fear is a great motivator. The evil ones know that. Uh, the evil one knows that. And that's what happened after 9-11. Americans were more than happy to let them enact a Patriot Act. You know, now we stand in line, take off our shoes, and they x-ray us and everything else before we go on an airplane. And uh, that's, you know, that seems good. But, you know, the Bible says, and I think it's 2 Thessalonians chapter 5, it says that... Uh, when they cry peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes. In other words, uh, this call for peace and safety, they'll, when when the rapture occurs, it's going to be so terrible, uh, the things that, that take place following the rapture, it's going to be so terrible that people will call for anything, any Savior to come along and make things right again, a new normal, the new normalcy, whatever, and, that, and they're going to call for Antichrist. They'll take, you know, they'll, they'll Henry Spock said uh, back many years ago that, uh, you know, uh, we don't care if he's a man or if he's a devil, you know, give him to us and, and help him to make us uh, make things right. And we'll take him. We'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll accept him. Well, that's exactly what Jesus said, you know, that me you reject, but to him you will accept. Talk to the Jews. And uh, and so he's coming. Antichrist is coming. But again, God is un- in control, and he will be destroyed with the brightness of Christ coming. You mentioned a religious end times tsunami uh, in chapter 11 of the book. What are they referring to uh, there as a religious end time tsunami? Well, again, I think it's just all of the anti-God uh, acceptance of things. Uh, and particularly, I think, just an ignorant, a deliberate ignorance of keeping the people ignorant uh, in, in the pews of what's really happening prophetically. I mean, if ever should be a time, a pastor should be looking, watching, what's going on around and warning the people through scripture not just with his own ideas but with scripture uh it's now and and because of that you know this trajectory we're on and we did that in terms of weather you know we can see this weather developing and and a hurricane coming up that's a tribulation storm and it's about to hit this so this world when the rapture occurs is going to hit it full force Uh, other people need to be aware and uh and again, the, the the religious. I'm talking. Well, I'm, the religious people are not going to see it anyway. But I'm talking about the Christian pastors. Those who are Christians have an obligation to uh, to preach and teach about what's coming and to point these things out. Now, uh, so you believe? I mean, like terrible times are just ahead for those who rebel against God, the God of Heaven, and won't accept Christ. There's going to be some terrible stuff happened there, right? Well, they're going, well, when the, when the rapture occurs, it's going to be total chaos, yeah. God's, God's still retraining. But yeah, you'll be left behind, you know, the Tim LaHaye series and Jerry Jenkins series, uh, left behind. Uh, you're going to be left behind to face these uh, these horrors of the tribulation. And let me tell you, the horrors of tribulation, Jesus himself, or Jesus himself said, there's never been a time like it before and never will be again. 
And that was, uh, he wasn't talking about the Holocaust either. He was talking about a time uh, after na- the nation of Israel was reborn and everything. And he said it would be the worst time that ever was or ever would be again. That was, I think, in, in uh, what is it? It's in, I think it's in uh, uh, Matthew 24, verse 20, 21, I think. Uh, and so uh, Jesus himself, the Lord, the, God, the creator God of all the universe, <laughs> said it's going to be the worst time ever. You can count on it. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> you know, you mentioned, uh, you know, number one, area would be Israel. But now Israel's not the only nation that shows up in this end times trajectory, this thing that's going to happen. Uh, there's other nations playing into this, and even this Ukraine war with Russia could spark stuff to bring these other nations that are involved in this into this uh, whole picture, could it not? Well, yeah. Um, I, I don't understand all of it, but... Uh but of course, Jesus said there'd be wars and rumors of wars. And Ezekiel pointed out there will be a great, uh, one great battle, great one great war that will take place. And that's one reason I know there's not going to be World War III before the rapture. Uh, not going to be an all-out nuclear conflict. There will never be a world war or all-out nuclear conflict before the rapture. You don't have to worry about it. That's because of Russia is going to lead the charge and, and into uh, into the Gog Magog war and. Uh, bring Iran, Turkey. We see those uh, Tugarma and, uh, and uh, Persia and, uh, and Rosh. Uh, that we see them gathered already together in uh, north of Israel with Syria, and uh, we see them. Uh, you know, they, they they don't say they're plotting, but they are. Uh, they don't even know it yet. They're going to come down, and God Himself is going to put hooks in their jaws and bring them down over the mountains of Israel, where He's going to destroy them. He can't destroy them if they're already destroyed in a nuclear conflict, which they already would be by that time if there was all-out nuclear conflict. America still has the most lethal lethal force nuclear arsenal, and, and so does Israel has on, on the planet. So that's got to change. Uh, uh, or else uh, Russia and all their allies would be destroyed as well as America. And America's not going to be destroyed, I don't think. And, and uh, they're not going to be destroyed because they've got to fulfill that Ezekiel 38 promise china would be a part of that they're the kings of the east or the king of the kings of the east it's going to come uh, over a dried up euphrates river in chapters 9 and 16 of revelation so they're not going to be destroyed so that's the reason i know there's not going to be all-out war but uh, but all of these nations are involved we see china as the kings of the kings of the east we're there in the news in the south china sea they're causing all kind of trouble and they're threatening taiwan and all that and, and of course, uh, Putin and, and, uh, and uh, Iran and um, even Turkey now are getting into, into cahoots with Syria. And at some point, uh, Damascus uh, says in Isaiah 7, 17, verse one, going to be destroyed in a single day, a single hour, and never be a nation again. And that that sounds nuclear to me. Maybe a, a Israeli uh, a nuclear weapon or something. So. All these things are in the mix, and we see all these nations that are mentioned in prophecy. We can see them being uh, being formed. America's not mentioned in prophecy uh, by name, but I really believe it's there by implication in Jesus' words, as it was in the days of Sodom. Yeah. Now, so with all this happening, Terry, it's, to me, getting obvious that we could be very close to seeing the catching away the the christians vanishing and all this stuff begin to start happening or we're just that close that close and that again that pete garcia and i wrote that book of the disappearing that's what it's all about and uh yeah i how just how close we are we are i think uh, mark uh we are at the point i mean it passed it's past the point in my in my estimation and uh, you know if i, if I could if i could urge uh, christ to call us home now you know, I would say, you know, Lord, it's a little bit, it's even past time, but I can't make that call. <laughs> yeah. But I hear that every day from people. I get a lot of emails. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I hear every day, you know, Lord, come, or, uh, we're ready for you. Well, people, you know, the church is looking, the people who are watching are looking, and uh, Titus 2.13, you know, looking for our blessed hope. Yeah. Well, before we go, uh, Terry, again, tell people how they can find out more about your uh, book here, Trajectory. Well, you can... Uh, you can go to raptureready.com or my prophecy blog, TerryJamesProphecyLine.com, and see see all my books and everything there. And uh, 
Defender has done a lot of my books. Harvest House um, has done my books. Uh, New Leaf Press, and we've even done we've done, even done one with the Penguin Group in New York, uh, the big you know secular publisher. We've done a lot of books with a lot of places. I mean, I think you can just you can look my name up on um, Google. I think it's probably the first name that comes up under Terry James under Google. And there again, it lists a lot of my interviews, a lot of my a lot of my uh, books and so forth. Okay. So. All right. Well, Terry, thanks for being with us again here on another edition of Crosspoint. I appreciate the uh, the invitation, Mark. Hey, that was a great interview today with Terry. Uh, always is. Folks, you remember Terry referred to a lot of scriptures. That's the other book I hold in my hand here, you know, because this is where the book that we were talking about today came from. It's from the things that the Bible has told us about. And the Bible is the very essence and inspired words of God. They're never outdated, so they work when you put books together like this that we were talking to today. It accurately directs us for every day of our life. And folks, the Bible contains the most important words you're ever going to read and certainly ever follow. Be sure and join us again next time as we again discuss issues that are affecting the church. Have a great week and allow God to use you for His purposes so that greater things can be done. Make your life count in God's plans for eternity. I'm Mark Taylor. Crosspoint is a program produced in Studio 101 at KNAO Radio. Not all of the views on Crosspoint reflect those of the management or staff of KNEO. You may contact the Crosspoint program at 10827 Highway 86 East, the Osho, Missouri, 64850, or by email crosspoint at kneo.org. You can hear Crosspoint four times a week, Saturday morning at 1, Saturday afternoon at 2, Saturday evening at 9, and Sunday evening at 7. You can also listen anytime. Harper's Kennel of Stella, Missouri is proud to be sponsoring this portion of broadcasting on KNEO. Owned by Judy and Danny Harper, Harper's Kennel of Stella, Missouri specializes in French Bulldogs. For more information, the phone number is 417-628-3083.